Dave Kindig, and you're watching Bitch and Rides Done Right. Hi, this is Larry, and I'm coming to you again from the Portland Roadster Show, and my guest today is Jerry Logan. Jerry, nice to meet you. Hey, glad to be here, Larry. You bet. And uh, been looking forward to this for a long time. Any of us that watch TV and have seen this car are going to be really interested to find out about the guy, number one, that owns it, how it all came together, how you got it, and, and the start of it. Jerry owns the Copper Cadillac from Bitchin' Rides, and we know we like... Copper, copper, copper. I wanted a lot of copper on this car. Uh, didn't quite get it all, but I got a lot. You did get a lot. Uh, Dave uh, Kindig, the builder, indicated that uh, he wanted to see a combination of some bright work along with the copper. And I said, no, just copper, copper, copper. And <laughs> we compromised. And uh, I think there's probably maybe two areas that I would have wished we got more copper but the car came out so beautiful with the brandy wine paint uh, matching that copper bringing that copper out and then uh, matching that interior uh, to a copper look in leather mm -hmm. killer very killer. Killer. just killer and something that I believe that a guy has to see to believe that car is I don't think a photograph We'll, we'll get close to what that car is. Yeah, you know, life. it's been on um, a Velocity Channel on Bitchin' Rides, mm -hmm. and everybody that I've met at the shows that see the car in person, real life, no comparison. Mm -hmm. uh, the car is beautiful on TV, but in, in the raw, it is grandocious. Yes. Grandocious. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. What did you start out with? I mean, what year was that Cadillac, and, and, and what, how did you go about getting it and chopping it, and what, where, how far did you go? Yeah, well, let, let's back up a little bit. Yeah, where did it come from, yeah. the idea? Well, maybe this was on Velocity Channel, but I'll repeat it. 1960. I just did a tour of duty in the Marine Corps. I'm in my hometown, Rockford, Illinois. And I just got in town. My buddy, uh, very wealthy buddy, uh, his folks had just bought this new Cadillac. And he just had to show that car off to me. But it wasn't at home. It was at the dealership being serviced. So he invited me to go with him. And uh, I went down to the dealership. We walked through the door. And here's a black-on-black -black 60 Caddy Coupe de Ville in the showroom. I just dropped my jaws. I had, in the Marine Corps, I had, there was nothing I was doing except trying to keep myself alive. Here I am, uh, face to face with this black beauty. I must have walked around that car for a good hour, just sizing it up and saying to myself, what has Detroit done in three and a half, four years I've been gone? <laughs> they had a Batmobile. Yeah. You know, they had wings. Yeah. Anyways, I just fell in love with that car. Uh, we walked away, jumped in his car, saw his car. And uh, on the way home, he's, uh, I, I mentioned to him, I said, one day I'm going to have one of those. And he says, oh, you mean the, like our, my dad's car? And I said, no, that black beauty that was sitting in the showroom. <laughs> and he just laughed because poor in the church mouse, and they were very well to do. Uh, long story short, um, I had to get out of town to make my success. So I got married and uh, my brother had trouble with in-laws. He just got married a year or so before. So I decided to, to uh, get away th from the in-laws. So I'm, I'm in Chicago area, so I moved to Portland. That's a ways away. To get away from the in-laws. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that was my love affair with that car. After seeing that car, now you got to figure that was 1960. Okay, 1960, this is 16. That's uh, 56 years ago, right? So I've had the dream of that car for a good 50 some years. 
Uh, after viewing it and as years passed, uh, I, I looked for one to see if I could buy a, a, a caddy, Coupe de Ville. Uh, never anything that I really liked. But I got into hot rodding, and I, I own a lot of hot rods. I, my collection right now is about 65 cars. And this is probably the, the premier of all of the cars I have. And I build show cars. I've I don't, seen. <laughs> I don't build them myself. I haven't built. I'm building five or six of them right now. All over the country. Santa Rosa, California, building me a 27 uh, Roadster. Uh, Salt Lake City, there's a Volkswagen that, that uh, bug that uh, Kindig and I are thinking about doing. Uh, he's got the car. I just haven't committed. Uh, because they're big dollar things. Big dollars. Uh, I've got a car being built in Malala at Dave Eckert's. I've got a car being built in Aberdeen, Washington, uh, a, a 34 Ford pickup truck. Hopefully it will be a Riddler contender. Very nice truck. Been building that truck for 38 years. Uh, I've got a car, a 32 uh, two-door sedan being built in Billingham uh, by John Barbero at uh, Pyramid Street Rods. I don't know, I think I could go on, but I'm not gonna do that. But anyways, back to the caddy. <laughs> the caddy. Yeah, hang on just for a second. Yeah. There are some people that call their, their car collection a stable. I think you have a herd. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> well, I have a gaggle of kids, <laughs> so it's more than a gaggle. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it, 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 uh, it just got, I got caught up. Yeah, yeah I would say you have uh, got my, caught my, up. My original, <laughs> my original tent in, in buying and collecting and building cars was to have one to drive every day of the month. How many cars would that be now? You've passed the Roughly benchmark. 30, yeah. right? <laughs> Roughly 30. Or a couple of cars yeah, every, couple, every day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and lunch. Uh, maybe 15, <laughs> driving twice a month. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, and I got up to 30 and... That wasn't enough. <laughs> so now, now I'm up against buying a building to start a museum. And I've got some real fun ideas on how to do the museum, how to position the cars, the size of the museum, the, the height of the ceiling, the lighting, uh, and how I want to work with local and some close, very close distant people where I could trade out cars and make it fresh every month. Yeah. Sort of like LeMay. LeMay does that up there in, in Tacoma. Um, back to the caddy. Um, so about seven years ago, I'm in, uh, I'm at the Puyallup Good Guys show at a cruise in and uh, at the fairgrounds there and uh, I always go to the sale lot or where they have things you know uh, just a habit <laughs> and here is a white with a blue interior never seen a day of rust 60 caddy coupe de ville so I chase the guy down and uh, he's he lives in Tacoma uh, we make an appointment. I go back up uh, about a week later, look at the car, drive the car. It was a nice car, 30-some thousand miles. Uh, second owner, he bought it from an estate. Uh, so I sat on the car, and of course I've had these designs in my head, and they, they were getting more finalized because I could go see the car in my collection, and I could really look at it, and I could draw some things out and proportionately what the car looks like. A lot like Dave Kindig. Kindig is a great, great proportionate uh, designer. Freehand. Freehand designer. Gorgeous. Anyway, and he's very talented. And uh, you've met Dave? Met him yesterday. You met him yesterday. <laughs> well, Dave has got a lot of charisma. 
<laughs> but if you pull on his beard, he really gets pissed. <laughs> If there's one person in this show that I believe would do that, it would be Jerry Lowe. Yeah, I, I would do that. Guy. I would do that. Anyways, uh, Dave and I got along uh, famously. We uh, we met in Boise at the Boise Roadster Show. And we were doing some Benz racing. I had the car. Uh, and uh, he said, you know, if you're ever interested in building something, let me know. And I said, you know, I got a 60 Caddy Coupe de Ville. He says, I've always wanted to do one of those. I said, my way. <laughs> yeah, and he said, what do you mean by that? And I said, well, I got some strong ideas on what this thing should look like. And he decided to uh, have me come over and visit his shop. He's got a beautiful, beautiful shop. At the time, he had about 20-some employees. Now, he's, I think he's got 28 employees. Um, and he shares everything. You know, uh, he's with Velocity Channel. They pay him money. Uh, to be on that channel. Mm -hmm. I don't know how the other guys do it, Chip Foos and, and uh, Boyd Coddington. I don't know how they did it when they were on TV. He splits the money evenly amongst everybody in his shop. He just doesn't take it home. That's just un uh, it's unheard of. And unheard to hear of. you say that is so what I picked up from him yesterday. Yeah. He's a, he's a people the way guy. He is. He's a he's people a, guy. And a real yeah. guy. A real Man. guy. He, he's, he's the real McCoy. I think uh, no, nothing uh, sh uh, downplaying uh, Chip Foose. He's as good as Chip. But I think he's got a personality that's a little bit better. Yeah. And, I, and I like Chip. And I like, and I like Chip's dad. Mm -hmm. Nice people. Anyway, um, so I go over and visit his shop. And I'm in awe because it's beautiful. I don't know how many square feet, but it's big. And eventually, uh, from the time I met him and now, he bought the building. So he's doing pretty well. Uh, and he's got an upholster at the end of the building, a gym. Uh, I forget the name of the upholstery shop, but he did the upholstery on the car. Uh, and uh, they work very, very close together. And uh, like everybody else he works with, they're very, they're close friends. Mm -hmm. So it's easy for him to walk in and say, oh, that's not good enough. Or, oh, oh you went beyond what I thought. So anyways, uh, I get the car to him. But I get the car to him after I take it to Gene Winfield in Mojave, California. Why did I take it to Gene? I wanted a name for a guy that chops cars mm -hmm. and he's a great chopper he say, does he does mercs that. he does caddies he does a good job mm -hmm. so i took it down to uh gene winfield in mojave he chopped it and uh, uh after he was done with it it took a little longer than normal but i got the car i take it up to dave and that's when you saw me on tv when i drove the car in Remember that? Yeah, I yeah. do remember that. Well, that was all stage, of course. <laughs> but I drive drive the car in and, and get out. And, oh, hi, Dave. You know, and, and <laughs> we go through the so there's uh, a little bit of the that. TV I mean, routine, yeah. yeah. And uh, we walk around the car, and that's where the copper, copper, copper started. Yeah. And Dave kept saying, no, I don't want to do all that copper. But it ended up where we compromised, and, and it came out beautiful. I, I'm I'm pleased with what he's got. A little areas that I would like to have more, but copper. But uh, with that interior uh, being uh, in a copper hue, uh, that that satisfied my desire to have a lot of copper look. Oh yeah. Anyways, I gave him the idea for the. Uh, uh, if you remember when I, when we walked around the car uh, in the show. I said, I want the wheel openings to look like a 54 Buick Skylark. Open them up. Every one of those Cadillac cars in the past, always in the back, always had skirts. They, you know, it was just a square opening. And they'd put that damn skirt on there. And you'd see just a little teeny bit of that wheel, you know, or the rim. I didn't want that. I wanted to open it up and make it look decent and, and look at what you got back there. And uh, so he said, yeah, that's a good idea. And I said, I want the same in the front. Okay. And you know that uh, 67 Camaro? Remember when they came out of that 67? Yeah. 
you know that hood treatment they had on those? It looked like fake intakes. I said, I want to break up that front hood because it's so big, very long. And he said, okay, that's, I got some ideas. And I said, on the trunk, the trunk's very long. Let's put, let's put something on to break that up. Maybe some spears down it or something like that. So those were the basic ideas. The car was already there chopped. Oh, and by the way, let's backtrack. I took the car to Gene Winfield. He says, how much do you want this chopped? I'd like two and a half inches. He chops it three and a half. <laughs> I wish it was two and a half. It, it, it proportionally, it'll look a little better. But it, 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 he did a good job. And uh, of course, uh, Dave took it in and finished all of that work. Um, so the car was there. The ideas were presented, and Dave took it to the next step. That's how he does it. When I jumped in the car, you remember at the end, the last video, the car's done. It's not in the raw. It's all painted. Mm -hmm. Interior's in it. And I jump in the car, and I'm talking about the steering wheel. Hey, this is really cool. They, they made that steering wheel on a 3D printer. <laughs> on a 3D printer. <laughs> And uh, made the wireframe for it, built it all up, made it. You know, um, that, that's his. That's how innovative. That's how innovative those guys are there. Um, so I'm in the car, and I'm am looking at the dash, and I say, Dave, those guys in your upholstery shop, they they know how to wrap a dash. That is so beautiful, tight, tight yeah, seams. tight. You see, you see the seams, yeah. not just. Square seams. I said, how do you do that? And he says, Jerry, that's painted. <laughs> he matched he matched the leather color and the dullness and he painted the dash. It's the only way they could do it. Because there was too many tucks. Way too many tucks. Uh, but it's beautiful. I mean you, you can't tell. You showed that to me and, and again from a distance I looked in there, there's no way you could ever told no and it wasn't until you you waited until i got in there i looked at the seam i thought the same thing you did i'm going man that is sweet that, that, and then you sprung on that it was painted and painted. it does not it does not look, look painted. painted it looks painted. like leather yeah 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 did a good i mean job. we've seen him do wood before on the show yeah and he does that kind of treatment all the time but to see him do the dash like I know. that i've I never know. seen that before i don't think that's the first one Probably, it probably I, it won't be the last I think he one. Snuck, I think he snuck some of those in on some guys. Uh, but it doesn't make any difference. Uh, what are you going to use a leather uh, uh, dash for? Yeah. You hit yeah. your head on. Maybe, yeah. uh, you know, if you're in an accident, there ain't going to be no accident. Because mm. <laughs> you ain't going to drive that car yeah. much. <laughs> and, and, you know, the materials matching paint. That's always that's always oh, a problem too. Oh Usually, boy. you know, and with that color, it, is, it was it's so dead on. It is. It's, it's dead, dead on. on. And you, you would have thought on that color, it would even have been harder because oh, that, I know it's a very unique looking. But 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 what's beyond that is is the finish is dull, stipple. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> well, well, that's their magic. <laughs> that's why you pay them big bucks. <laughs> <laughs> And by the way, he got big bucks I'm for that sure car. He did. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, so he had the ideas, and he just took it to the next level. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. The the uh, one of the things that we love to see, you know, is is the copper and how he did the fender wells. You know, with the other things, we kind of saw them evolve. But what he did with the fender wells and what they do when the car, when you show the car, you have the car up in the air. Yeah. And with the light, when you when you actually like get down to your knees to take a photo of it, the angle up with the copper, beautiful. Well, it see, now so that's, cool. that's what I'm talking about, him taking it to the next level. I, I wanted that opening to look like a, a 54 Buick Skylark. He bought for the front, brand new inner, fender steel body worked it and had it copper plated I, I just thought it painted you know <laughs> painted a different color because that, that's what they did with the skylarks right, right you know if it was a aqua skylark it had red coves anyway uh i thought he'd paint it but he, no he he coppers it so when you when you said copper, I mean you had to sacrifice on some of those other copper areas that you probably thought 
I really want this oh, all yeah. copper. Yeah. But when he did that, if if he was going to do something, if he was going to do something that was going to help make up for it, it really was. It was those it was that. wells. I mean, it was it, that and the rims. Did you notice the rims? Oh man, there isn't anybody sees that car That's one and off. doesn't drool on those. He rims. designed those rims like Chip Foose designs, and he designed those rims and had them made, one off. And then he did those copper insets all around the rims. And do you know that rim, the white wall on that rim, is the rim? Yeah. It's not a white wall rubber. That's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's the rim. <laughs> so you don't have to get out there with the Ajax and scratch the old No, uh, you get out with a pink can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, beat the shit out of it or something. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, uh, he, he's, he, he took it to another level. Yeah. Have you now? You started to talk about the the shows that you have been in earlier, yeah. which which was. Uh, do, do you know the show order and how has it done? I mean, I'm, I'm guessing it had to had to do really really good. It did. Uh, it was debuted at the SEMA show. You know, you know, mm-hmm. SEMA. Right. In uh, I've heard of SEMA. You've heard of SEMA, <laughs> yeah. SEMA in uh, Las Vegas. It's always the first week in November. And it's two million square feet of auto accessories. Oh, and you, by the way, 56 you, miles of aisles. You know a little bit about auto accessories, too. For people that don't know yeah. you, uh, you kind of came out of that auto accessory I world. I did. That's why I know SEMA. Yeah, so you want to. I showed in SEMA for over 45 years. I was going to say, open the bag there just so the guys oh, that don't know you well, know the tie there. I. I didn't name the company after my name because I didn't want my name definitely associated with it. Uh, I started uh, Bushwhacker back in 1967. And it was three of us, two guys from Camas and myself from Portland. Uh, Their last names was Thompson and Dushan. Mine was Logan. We called it LTD Enterprises. And the first year, year and a quarter, uh, both Gary Thompson and Kelly Duchon backed out. Uh, It was a daylight basement operation. And I ended up with the company. Uh, And I was working uh, for uh, a big plastics company down in Lake Oswego called Gage Industries. I was their chief engineer down there. And... uh, I worked this on the side, Uh, but I had Gage make the parts for me, vacuum formed, fender flares. Uh, So anyways, that's when the the company got started. Uh, In the early 70s, my brother John moved out from the Chicago area and uh, went to work for me and he said, what the hell's an LTD? And I said, well, besides a Ford car, it's the name of this company. And he says, well, that's what I'm getting at. Uh, It needs to be more direct. And at the time, we were making a lot of accessories for off-road vehicles. Mm -hmm. So we came up with the name Bushwhacker because they were out whacking bushes with these cars or trucks. Anyways, uh, so the name stuck. And it's sort of unusual. Uh, And uh, we did very well. Uh, in the 47, 48 years I had the company and I uh, hired uh, a CEO about 15 years before I sold it. His name is Russ Morgan and uh, he, he, like Dave Kindig, he took Bushwhacker to another level and did a very good job in managing. Um, and uh, it sold for multi-millions and a That's lot. good news. Yeah, but it was good news for me. <laughs> and my kids liked it too because they had, I had done some estate planning <laughs> and they were getting a part of the action. And I gave a part of the action to my CMO, my CFO, and my uh, CEO. So I didn't end up with a whole enchilada, but uh, I, I uh, created some very happy people. That's good. And they made me happy because they took the company to another level and was able to sell for that kind of money. Is, and that's the kind of thing that gets you to be where you were in the first place. If you're yeah. not that kind of a person, I don't really believe that you're blessed. That you, way. you, you know, I, I had a philosophy when I when I worked for some other companies. I learned early on that 
when they hired you, it wasn't necessarily for your talent. A lot of managers or a lot of uh, department heads would hire you, but they would micromanage you to death. In other words, you would do something for them and then they change it because they had to put their stamp on it. Their ego was either that big or they knew more than, than the person that was developing, engineering the product. So when I started a business, my philosophy was I'm gonna hire people with talent, with the right synergy to fit the organization, give them direction, and let them do it on their own. And that was my philosophy, and it worked. Everybody was happy. I left them alone. But if they went astray, that didn't mean that I couldn't rein them in and talk to them. <laughs> I, Give him some redirection. <laughs> yeah. I got a feeling you were probably pretty yeah. good at redirecting. Oh, too. I can I, redirect. <laughs> yeah, I can redirect. Uh, uh, never liked to do it. Yeah. And I tell you what, as an owner of a company, and probably the hardest. You thing. probably know this: redirection and letting people go. Oh, yeah, the worst thing you could ever do. If you have a heart, you know. Yeah. I mean, these are real people, and it's just, yeah, yeah, that's a tough thing. See, it's, easy to hire, hard to fire, and the reason it's easy to hire is because you're looking at the person with no background you don't know you don't know what the background is until they were working for you it's like a box of chocolates yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. one at a time test it out yeah, yeah. anyways uh yeah that's that was my philosophy and it, and it uh everybody liked it that's cool. so so back to sema we're yeah. we're at sema and, and i was at sema just sema the, last year the, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, in november of uh 15 mm -hmm. uh the car was there uh Dave brought it. By the way, Dave is campaigning the car. I, I am doing nothing with the car. That's, he kinda, that's nice. He takes it, it everywhere. He That's his booth. Mm -hmm. He shows it. He cleans it. All of that. And that's part of what he gives for the multi-bucks that you pay him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I got to put that in there because I, got, I just got to do that. <laughs> uh, but that's part of it. So uh, we were at SEMA. You know who John Diagostino is? I've heard the name. John Diagostino. <laughs> he's around here somewhere. Yeah, he's over <laughs> He's over with that uh, uh, 63 yellow chopped SS. Uh, it's not his, but he's, he's in that booth. Anyways, uh, John comes by and fell in love with the car because he's a, he's a custom car builder. And he comes by and he sees the car and he walks... He comes back, he comes by the next day and he gives me the SEMA John Diagostino Award. Nice. Yes. Yes. Big deal. Yeah. That's number one. I go to the Grand National Roadster Show with the car. Dave takes it there, sets it up. And at the end of the show, uh, I'm not getting very many awards. I, I got a class award and then... Uh, I'm wait, you know, you have to wait until the end. They give off these special awards. Yep. I get the George Barris Award. And George just died. Just, yes. November 2nd, just when the SEMA show was on. He died November 2nd. Mm -hmm. Anyways, the family gave me the award. Uh, and the award uh, is this plaque. Very nice. Well done. And uh, that vibrant yellow jacket. With, with the Barris I've seen, shield yeah. on the back. Yeah, yeah. gorgeous jacket. Yeah. Anyways, they, uh, that was uh, at the Grand Nationals. Dave takes it to Sacramento Autorama. And uh, once again, I'm up for Custom D'Elegance Award. There's two big awards at that show because that's a custom car show. Mm -hmm. A custom car capital of the world. Anyways, uh, I'm up for the uh, Custom D'Elegance Award. I lose. I get a lot of plaques, but I lose. And I'm a little down in the jaws because I thought, the, uh, well, I'll tell you the car that won was that Plymouth Belvedere that you see over in, in E-Hall. It is. The convertible. That is, that is a Isn't beautiful that a, car. He, he yeah. beat me out for that yeah, award. I mean, I, I'm not going to say yeah. my taste better but I than beat your him. car. But wait a minute. I beat him <laughs> the same day within five minutes. I got the uh, King of Customs Award. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
justice. <laughs> well, what I get with the King of Customs Award is a ring, a jacket with my name on it. They don't give it to you until next the next year at the luncheon Hall of Fame where you're ushered in because you are the King of Customs. I, bet we I love that one. I bet we I can't wait that. for that. That was a good one. That was a good one. Um, Dave uh, took it to Salt Lake. I didn't make it to Salt Lake. <clears throat> but he, he had it at the Salt Lake uh, Autorama Roadster Show. Did he just drive it over there? Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> he could have. It's, it's right off of State Street. <laughs> Anyways, uh, and it won the whole show. Got the big crystal statue and... Two thousand dollars and yeah, really cool. Nice. So here we are. What do I expect here? What do you expect here? Because I, and, mm. and I have to lay the groundwork here for those that haven't been at this show. And we've been a, a few times. I have been, and I'm sure live, you live in here. You have too. This year is special for Portland. This the, yeah. the the kinds of cars that are in here. I just did an interview with JF Lanye and he, the, the Riddler Award winner, and he said that in all of his shows that he's ever gone to, the quality of cars overall at this show, in, at this show are the best yeah. he's ever seen. Yep. So how do you, we've been trying to figure out, you know, knowing that you were coming here, I, right off the bat, I'm thinking, how does anybody beat that car? Yeah. I, I'm just feeling in my heart, how There's does some nice cars beat that out car? There. Yeah. And then when we walked in and we walked the show, yeah. Yeah. that's the groundwork for this. So what exactly. do you expect, Jerry? You know what? Drama. <laughs> Drama. I don't expect anything, but I hope. I hope I can uh, uh, get class award. I hope I can get the class award. And if there's uh, some special award out there that somebody thinks that car should have, I, I, I would receive one. that. I can think of one. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would receive that. Uh, I don't expect anything. Uh, but the drama... The drama is going to be for them at the awards. Yeah, at the awards tomorrow. What four o'clock? Something like that. Yeah. So uh, I don't. I, I never expect anything big, and uh, but I hope. I hope that something happens. I think the car is worth it. I did. I think it's worth the big awards. Uh, I ha my name's associated with the car because I paid and bought and gave a lot of designs thoughts for the car. Mr. Kindig should get some kind of award as a builder uh, for that car here. I think he should. Um, but I, I, I'm, I hope that it does well. Not for Jerry Logan, for that car. Oh, yeah. For that car. You know, and, and Jerry, you have certainly been doing this long enough to know that, you know, you go to judged events. You never know. It's it's judged. You, you, I mean, it's it, it, how it's interpreted. Mm. And, and to me, the, that's where the drama comes in with this show is that it's interpreted. Now you're interpreted against some unbelievable competition. Mm -hmm. I, I just, mm -hmm. to me, it's it's even bigger than, than it would normally be. I mean, it's whoever be a gets tough it, one. It, it's, it's, it's going to be, be a like, tough wow, one. Wow, really? And you know what? Steve Frisbee and I uh, aren't uh, competitors, but we have competed. And if I win, I know he's upset. If he wins, uh, I wonder why. <laughs> no. no, he's a good guy. I, I like Steve. And he builds some beautiful cars. Beautiful cars. Well, I guess, uh, I guess tomorrow we'll see, won't we? Tomorrow, uh, I'm going to say between 5.30 and 6. Where, You'll know. Where it goes You'll down. know. Yeah, I'll know. Yeah, yeah. I I don't because they are so such a good quality. My heart's in a couple of different places with yeah. this, just because they're so good. We yeah. we sat here with our taste, trying to figure out how on earth anybody could pick it, and, yeah. and I I just I just don't see it. There are every, the other years of of this Portland Roaster show. I can say with great confidence in other years. I wouldn't even have any hesitation. You could pick one. I'd say easy. Yeah, yeah, that would yeah, yeah. in a heartbeat. Yep. But but this year, who knows? I agree. I agree. Yeah, it'll be something. Uh, it's it's judged by ISCA, International Show Car Association, and it's a points thing. And so that that should mean that it should be pretty consistent. I mean, they've got their standards, and and the, most the of you playing guys know. field the playing field is level. Yeah, level. 
and I, I respect I, ISCA. There are some regional uh, leanings, <laughs> like I took my uh, 68 Shelby GT350 to uh, Detroit to the Riddler show, and I won everything on the West Coast. A Henry J with a blown Chevy in it, going through the hood, beat that beautiful, beautiful 68 Shelby GT350 fastback. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a gorgeous car. Mm -hmm. Dave Eckert in uh, uh, Malala, at Eckert's uh, Rod and Custom built the car. Mm -hmm. Beautiful car. I know we're at the end of the So it's regional, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, they lean a little bit, I think, they look a, lean a little bit to regional people. If, the, if I'm from Oregon and a car is from Detroit and it's close, yeah. maybe the Detroit's yeah. probably going to win. You kind of yeah. got to feel but that. But, you know, I can't say that for sure yeah. because it is a points thing. I've got a, I've got a 34 Ford uh, Cabriolet in this show. That's exactly where I was going next is that we're, we, we got to the end of the, of the Copper Cadillac, but you do have another car in this, yep. and, and only briefly, because i got to make sure that we're going to get, I'm going to let you know we're putting photos into that car. That car is beautiful. It's a beautiful car. Wow. Hasn't won a thing. <laughs> uh, that's why. I'm, I can't, I mean, I can't I was going there. When you see that, we looked that car I was going completely. there with the ISCA. Oh. He's going there another direction. Yeah. No, that is weird. I haven't won a thing with that car, and I get, I get my judge slips. You know, you can get your judge slips. After the show, you can go in and the yeah, judge will give you the yeah. slip and say it's got rusty bolts or, you know, that's why you got degraded. There's nothing. I looked at car no, over no, wait close. A minute. Wait a minute. Ah. Have you seen the underside of that car? I didn't lay on the ground. It's better on, uh, it's better underneath than it is on top. And it's a candy apple car. I mean, it's a beautiful car. It's built by uh, John Kosmoski, House of Color. He built that car. Beautiful. He painted that car. Um... Here's what the judges are telling me. The underneath is dirty. The underneath is dusty. I, I can't find it. I'm sorry, I can't find it. I haven't won any award except the class award. I haven't got second, I've gotten got first. A class award. Beautiful car. I, I, I'm not putting down ISCA. I'm just saying, where's the dust? Where's the dirt? And, and you know we did get photos of the car, and that is it is really worthy of a, a 2020 slot in this oh, show. Oh, you, and, you and, know and about you I know did, about that. Yeah, huh? I mean I know about the spacing <laughs> and stuff, and we took pictures of it. And here it's in a, a, a 10 by 20, but and I will say the car that's right beside it, they look beautiful together. They do. They but do. that car on its own, 2020, and I, I'm looking at the car with everything else that's in here, and when we're talking about tough competition. Competing with the Copper Cadillac. That's how good I thought yeah, that car yeah. looked. Me too. Me too. But it hasn't won anything. At two two shows. Grand National and Sacramento. Who knows here? Who knows? Maybe they think I cleaned it. <laughs> well, maybe, I haven't touched it. <laughs> maybe it's losing. Um, can I have it? No, you can't have it. No, I mean, I, it's not a winner, so I, you're not really yeah. losing I'm much, keeping right? the keys. <laughs> you don't get the keys. Hey, a guy's got to ask. You got you got 63. I mean, what's what's like cutting it down to one? I mean, yeah. it, it's, you know. Well, it's like it's like having children. I mean, you're going to give one away? <laughs> no way. Heck no. No way. No, you're not going to do yeah, that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well. Maybe if you had 20 of them. Well, and that is a, ride, that is a ride's done right first. Asking someone for a car, but if I'm asking anybody for a car, I think Jerry's a good guy to ask. There's a, there's a there's a bunch of them, and the quality is good. I'll even take the one that you think is the worst. I, I'll take any one of them. Well, <laughs> the, my worst car is a Rolls Canardly. Can I have it? Have you ever have you ever seen <laughs> have you ever seen a Rolls Canardly? Beautiful car. Rolls down one hill, can hardly make it up the next. <laughs> That's what kind of car you're going to get. I'll take it, man. I'll take, I'll take it, and I'll have you sign it, and I'll keep it forever. Yeah, oh, I'm good with hey, that, Hey, I could sign it. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm give me that. that felt tip. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Jerry, thanks so much yeah. for, for coming over, and it's been a, it, it was totally worth the wait. I could say that for sure. Oh, it's so, a joy. Thanks so I, much. I enjoy it. We'll see you guys next time. Thank yep. you. See ya.